there he is. The boss dog in all his glory. Done drinking water. Absolutely gorgeous day here in Florida. As he gets under the picnic table. But let's get to watching the world burn. Watching the world burn. October 22nd, 2024. Let's get into it. Well, the election is only two weeks away. Hopefully you're voted or you put your ballot in. If you're in Arizona, Arizona is now saying it's going to take them two weeks after November 6th to count the ballots. Now, is that some cheating or what? <laughs> Florida is what, the third or fourth biggest state in the United States? And we're going to be done on, on election day and it's going to take Arizona two weeks? And then you got Michigan. Michigan's cheating up a storm. Pennsylvania. Hell, even that Ratwaller down in Georgia. He's got some things rigged up there in Mar Mar Mariopa County. So don't tell me the Democrats ain't rigging the election as best they can, but maybe we got it too big. Too big to rig. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I will. We got to start the video with the greatest troll in the history of the world <laughs> this is this is donald trump now if i could find some more videos i found this on the liberal hive mind now, he's got a good channel if you want to check that out uh so i did steal these clips from him but i forgot you know trump's been doing advertisements for mcdonald's for a long time i put together some really impressive deals but this thing you've pulled off it's amazing a big and tasty for just a dollar how do you do it what's your secret You're a man of few words. I like that. Got a buck? You're in luck. Because you can get a delicious, beefy, big and tasty or a McChicken sandwich for just a dollar. Every day at McDonald's. Purple. Very, very powerful. So we're going to start with uh, the clip that he had. And then if I can find some more of, of Trump's uh, earlier association with McDonald's. And then we got to get into Trump working at McDonald's. <laughs> Who's the greatest troll ever in the history of the world? Let's watch that now. And in a way, it's, you know, Donald Trump returning back to his roots. Got a buck? You're in luck. Because you can get a delicious, beefy, big, and tasty, a McChicken sandwich, and lots of your other favorites on McDonald's dollar menu every day. Together, Grimace, we could own this town. The Trumpinator shows up at the Golden Arches and connects with the people, and it's just what the good stuff is made of. A bunch of wholesome moments, it's goofy, it's funny, it's totally in character. I mean, we know Donald Trump's relationship with McDonald's. There's that iconic photo of Donald Trump on his multi-hundred million dollar private jet eating a Big Mac. And then, of course, there's that time he hosted a youth football team for dinner at the White House, where he ordered like $5,000 worth of McDonald's and created the most incredible McDonald's spread known to mankind. Well, Trump does it again. He goes right back to his roots. It's just epic. Let's have a conversation about it. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, folks. So the story that led the day was Donald Trump getting off his airplane to tell the press waiting on the tarmac that he's going to work at McDonald's. He's got a shift at McDonald's. I'm going for a job right now at McDonald's. I've had, I really wanted to do this all my life. And now I'm going to do it. Because she didn't do it. Thank you very much. I'll see you at McDonald's. And of course, the left all over X and every other social media platform was attempting to ridicule him. But like I said, it was just epic. Hello, everybody. Indy is here. She has, this is Indy. She has an apron for you. Oh, and good job on your oh, first name. I think I should take off. Trump? Should I take off my jacket? So the press wants to see this. <laughs> oh, you. He's a wealthy guy. Uh, he owns a lot of McDonald's. <laughs> it's great. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Trump, what's your favorite thing to order at McDonald's? I like it all. I like, it. <laughs> I like every ounce of it, everything. But I do like the French fries who I'll be working. Okay, let's say. Do you believe this? Look at this guy. He's a MAGA guy all the way. Okay, so for his first order, yep. Okay. Well, that's a good-looking group. Hello, everybody. This is not a normal situation, is it, huh? How are you? What a good-looking family. 
you. How did you produce those good looking kids? Give me, oh, they look like the wife. They look like the wife. How are you? Nice to see you. That's great. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. And there'll be no charge. Trump is paying for it. Is that okay? Oh, you're going to some extra stuff. Oh, okay, great. This is, this is all on Trump. Oh, all on Trump. I'm allowed to do that, right? Yeah. Huh? Let's check and make sure. Okay. It's everything you said it would it be. It better be. It's going to be the best you ever. I made it myself. You're the man. Make America That's great. That's it. Right. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. Everybody. Hey, please. I'm having a lot of fun here, everybody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hello, everybody. You can take this, right? I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Thank you. Look at that. Oh, Look at that. Oh, you? Thank you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. You made it possible for ordinary people like us to be here. Uh, you're not ordinary. I mean, thank you so you much. You are not ordinary. I can see. We pray for you. Uh, and, you. and you are the type of person thank we want you. to be the president. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank so you nice. for taking the bullet. For thank, you. thank you very much. Yeah, I took a bullet. That's right. Thank you, Mr. President. When you think about it, I guess that's right. Thank you. Thank you very much. We got to hit that timer. Bring that one up. I'm going to take care of these. Okay. okay. Right there, right there. Put that right far right, hang it right up there. Yeah. And then you want to do the salt over here? Yeah. I did these ones already, they're good. You just okay. gotta do that one right there. So grab that. Can I give them extra salt? No, no. <laughs> yep. Oh, yep, good. Okay. Right there. And then we're gonna grab the fry scoop right here. Right. Put it into there and just give them okay. a twirl that way. Okay, yep. where's a little thing? It's just a legendary move. I think it's a genuine move. You know, people argue that it isn't, but even if it isn't, it's just so smart. You know, the juxtaposition of it. Here we have a multi-billionaire real estate mogul running for president, and here he is, you know, showing that he's not unwilling to put himself in these kinds of positions, get his hands dirty, and to show respect and admiration for the people who work these kinds of jobs, because they're good jobs. They're good entry-level jobs for people to just gain a little bit of experience, make a little bit of money, and understand how a business operates. Is it a career? No, probably not, although it could be. I've heard of people working at McDonald's, becoming managers, and opening their own franchises. I've heard people also making it to corporate and getting into some pretty good positions on the corporate side. It can be a career, but in general, it's not. It's just work. But even though that's the case, there's still dignity in that work. And that's essentially the message that Donald Trump is showing here. And it's just legendary. And of course, his charisma, his people skills, take center stage. I think the optics are fantastic. The left, of course, is crying all over X, and they're ridiculing him, but there's nothing to ridicule. It's actually pretty freaking badass. There's just something about it, you know? It's not too serious. He's not taking himself seriously. It's silly, like I said earlier. It's goofy. It's typical peak Trump. And it's just a cool moment to dominate the headlines. And that's exactly what I think the real intention was. You know, like I've been saying, the Trump campaign is firing on all cylinders. They are moving ahead full speed. And they're just making good plays. They're just dominating the press cycle. That's really what's going on. Like I keep saying, Trump's sucking all the oxygen in the room. He's totally hogging the spotlight. And Kamala Harris, she's just failing. She knows she can't do good in these public appearance moments. She's not great at connecting with people. The last time she tried showing up at a retail location, the entire internet was face palming and cringing collectively. We all remember the Doritos incident. Oh, Dougie, there they are. Yeah, thank you. I know you want this. Is it corn that's over there, Chip? Oh, uh, no, yeah, that's oh, that's that. the best. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Corn nuts is over there. It just feels so inauthentic. She seems so nervous in front of the camera, like she's trying to make something of it, but failing to do so. You know, the reality is Kamala Harris just doesn't have the skill set to make these moments happen. And so her strategy has been take a back seat. Even at her most recent rally, if you could even call it a rally, she was on stage for a little bit, but then immediately left to sit backstage for the main attraction, which was a speech from Lizzo. You know, she's not even the main act. She's not the main attraction, and she's the candidate. That's insane, frankly. 
frankly, it's unheard of. It's crazy. You know, just like I said in that ridiculous, phony SNL style skit that Kamala Harris submitted during the Al Smith dinner, she didn't show up to the dinner, but rather just sent in a video skit, which she wasn't even the main star in. Now, what's your favorite thing here, Mr. President? I like it all. I like it all. It's all good stuff. Do you prefer? Great American food. President Trump likes fast food. A lot. He's made no secret of it, especially while on the campaign trail in 2016. What is a day uh, on the road in terms of, of meals for you? You know, it's, breakfast, lunch, it's and not. Dinner? It's not probably healthy, but I'm not sure I believe in that. You know, you eat, who knows? You know, they say, don't eat this food, don't eat that. Well, maybe those foods are good for you. When you, when you roll up at a McDonald's, what, is, what do you Donald Trump order? Uh, fish and light sometimes, right? <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Big Macs are great, the quarter pounder with cheese. I mean, I, it's great do stuff. People- In the book, Let Trump Be Trump, former campaign manager Corey Lewandowski described Trump's campaign diet. One order reportedly consisted of two Big Macs, two filet of fish sandwiches, and a chocolate milkshake, which adds up to 2,430 calories. But Trump's love of fast foods predates politics. He's even put his seal of approval on a number of brands. A big and tasty for just a dollar? How do you do it? What's your secret? It's wrong, isn't it? But it feels so right. Then it's a deal? Yes, we eat our pizza the wrong way. Crust first. According to Trump, he's a big fan of a burger and fries for two reasons. Consistency and safety. I like cleanliness. I like clean. And the one thing about the big franchises, you have to have a certain, you know, because of the importance. One bad hamburger, you can destroy McDonald's. One bad hamburger, you take Wendy's and all these other places and they're out of business. If you go to the stage where you might worry about, you know, getting a food taster in there, somebody tries to slip something into Well, I never even thought about it until now. Now maybe. Sorry. All right, was that fantastic or what? That was better than him in my last video. I want you to go back and watch that. I did Trump when he was uh, doing the uh, Catholic dinner. And, uh, man, he had some great jokes. Chuck Schumer was sitting right in front of him. (laughs) He was sitting in front of Hitler. That's what the Democrats call Trump. Uh, Chuck Schumer was sitting there laughing with Hitler. Oh, my God. What's the media going to make of that? Holy moly. The second greatest troll ever and you probably haven't heard about this, was the, uh, I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was in Ukraine. You know, the Russians had just taken another village, and they raised the Korean flag. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Because, you know, Ukraine's been going on and on about how uh, Korea is sending soldiers to uh, fight in Ukraine. Folks, there ain't no damn Korean. There might be some Korean sappers or some Korean engineers. I, even that, I'd be surprised, but there's no Koreans fighting with the Russians. They don't even speak the language. The Russians wouldn't want them around. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't foreign mercenaries that are, are uh, working with the Russians. There's a Japanese dude that I've seen in Ukraine, and then there was also, I don't know if you followed, uh, what was it? It's, I think it was Dan, Daniel Daniels, Daniel Davis. And he was did an interview with an American, or a British, I'm sorry, it was a British guy, and he's over there fighting with the Ukrainians. So it's not like it's, it's not unprecedented. But I'm just telling you, you know, that's that's the way it is. So we're going to get to uh, the first video I wanted to, to cover. And this was, uh, actually, somebody pulled this clip up. But if you don't think that uh, Russia was provoked with the NATO expansion over the many years that they, you know, weren't supposed to expand, this is Joe Biden from many years ago talking about NATO expansion. And he didn't give a crap about what Russia thought of it. Let's watch that. Where do they go? I had one interesting comment. Our conversation was gone off, which was repeated with Levitt. They talked about they don't want this NATO expansion. They know it's not in their security interest and on and on. And said, well, and if you do that, we may have to look to China. And I couldn't help using the colloquial expression from my state by saying to Zaganov, lots of luck in your senior year. Um, you know, uh, good luck. And if, not, if that doesn't work, try Iran. Um, and uh, I'm serious. I said that to them, and these were, very, and 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 they know. I knew. They knew. Everybody knows that that is not an option. And everybody knows. Every one of those leaders acknowledges and needs, and they resent it. But they need. They need to look west. And the question is, whether this is designed to completely shut them out, but not in terms of whether or not is a direct military security threat. 
All right, so that was the clip on him uh, with NATO expansion, because I was on Ukraine just talking about the Russians raising the Korean flag. <laughs> that was the greatest troll ever. You know, don't tell me the Russians don't have a sense of humor. Yeah, got it. A lot of people, they, they think that, you know, the way that Russians are always depicted in the movies, that they don't have a good sense of humor. I thought that was funny as hell. So anyway, uh, we're going to get to the picnic table, do a little reading. I'm just going to go through the, uh, the clips and the, and the readings uh, that I've got in my bookmarks. And that'll be the video for today. But uh, I did want to talk about the election because that's the most important thing and how everybody's cheating. Pennsylvania's cheating. Georgia's cheating. Michigan's cheating. You know Arizona's cheating. And uh, I don't know what, what other states that they, they've got some things rigged in. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm hoping that, you know, I, I got to thinking about this. Now tell me what you think. I'm sorry, getting the sun in, in, the, in the camera there. I was thinking, you know, because in Detroit, that was, in Wayne County, uh, Michigan, is where most of the cheating took place in 2020. I mean, remember they threw the Republicans out and then they uh, put uh, uh, newspaper over the window so nobody could see what the hell they were doing behind closed doors and all of that. And of course, the sheriffs just turned a blind eye or the police, you know. Uh, and the Republicans were standing out in the cold, couldn't do a damn thing about it. Well, you know what? I mean, a, a lot of black men, are, I believe this time, are going to vote for Trump. At least that's what I'm hearing. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, they're going to be around those polling stations, and they're not going to let the Democrats cheat in Wayne County the way they've been able to in the past. Just a thought. It's just a thought. All right, let's get to reading the posts and get rolling. All right, let's get into the news. So uh, first thing I wanted to tell you was uh, definitely go up on YouTube. That's a new phone. And uh, I, you know, I always go through and see if there's any settings that, uh, you know, I've missed in the past. And uh, so I found a, a guy, I, I, I don't know, I'll try to put a link to the video below because it, some of the tips he gave uh, were fantastic. I'd never done these things before, but the, the biggest one was you can make the font bigger on your phone. Uh, and then also on your uh, your sleep screen, you can display certain stuff on your sleep screen. I'd never done that before. <laughs> you're just saying, well, you're pretty stupid, that cybersecurity guy. Well, you know, I didn't know. But look at how big that font is. Isn't that cool? So I can really read it now. I don't need my glasses to, to read the phone no more. So let's uh, let's just get into the news here. Uh, this is Zlat71. Uh, uh, the, the fearless tank group successfully defeated Ukrainian forces in the Krushk border region on the southeastern outskirts of the settlement of Green Path. Green Path, isn't that a wild name? Uh, Ukrainian troops were caught off guard by a swift attack from the North fighters. The Ukrainian armed forces infantry fled uh, it, in a crowd to take cover in a dilapidated building only to be struck by fire from the civilian infantry fighting vehicle. And there's a video, but I won't show it to you. It's pretty graphic. You don't want to see it. Uh, this was interesting. Uh, I, if I can find some footage, we're going to do, uh, the, you know, the big story of today is bricks, obviously. I've been talking about it for probably the last couple, couple three videos. Well, listen, Pepe Escobar is a geostrategic analyst now joining us here at our special studio here at RT International. And, you know, the fact of the matter is you, Thank you. Pepe, I've been reading your work mm. for many, many years. I know you have two, Saskia, big Thanks. fan of your work, but you have been pushing a narrative of the multipolar world. You've yes. been talking about BRICS for years. Yes. Where do we stand today? <sighs> yeah, it's this like that, is isn't it? Yes, yeah. because this is not only the most important summit of the year, it's the most important summit of the decade. Mm -hmm. Depending on what they decide until Thursday night, it could be the most important summit of the millennium. <laughs> And this is not, I, I'm not going hyperbolic here. It's Strong true. Strong statements, Pepe. But uh, the weight of history is over their shoulders. Mm. I'm sure Mr. Putin, Mr. C, Mr. Modi, and even Mr. Pezeshkin, 
they get it. Mm. And the whole global South, the whole global majority, 88, 89% of the world's population, they have the, they're going to have their eyes glued to Kazan because yeah. they want to see practical measures. Mm. Because BRICS now is the most important multilateral organization in the world trying to build this high-speed rail towards a more just not only multipolar, but multinodal, as I prefer to call it. Mm. It's, it's a collection of nodes, mm. uh, different cultures, different civilizations, states, different way of thinking, different cultures, but sitting at the same table with mm. mutual respect, exactly. which is something that the West, we are all products of the West, of course. Mm. The West unfortunately forgot that. Not the West in human terms or humanistic terms. That those crass political elites, in mm. fact. You know, mm. they buried diplomacy. They condone a genocide in 21st century. They don't, they simply cannot admit that the center, the spiritual, geopolitical, geoeconomic, and cultural center of the planet mm. from west to the east. And the east as a whole, we can count the whole of Eurasia parts of Africa as well. Yeah. So, you know, the eastern part of, of the planet, in fact, is looking towards the future. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's major major moves on the geopolitical yeah. chessboard today, isn't yeah, it, Saskia? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, you talked there about how the West can't really accept that we're seeing the center of power shifting uh, east and south. Obviously, one of the huge aspects of that is talk about reform of global bodies, and the UN stands at the very heart of that. Mm. I mean, all of the BRICs have said the security Security Council needs a shake-up. It's just living in a different century. Different century. Yes. And you know what was fascinating? A couple of weeks ago, the US representative to the UN, she was asked, who would you support? Do you know what she replied? Germany and Japan. <laughs> and I thought, you have missed the no. point. These are waning economies. And also, it just shows that you still want to keep people there who are within your sphere of influence. There's just this inability to just allow a bit of equality, to allow a bit of... And complementing what you just said, which is absolutely correct, two occupied nations, not only vassals, but still militarily occupied. Yeah, because yeah. this is the real status of Germany and Japan nowadays. They are occupied neo-colonies. Mm. So this is, uh, we still go back to 1945. Well, yeah, I mean, we, what, what, they cannot change the status of 1945. Yeah, yeah, they they yeah. refuse to admit it. And when the Chinese with 5,000 years of diplomacy, <laughs> we strongly recommend that you abandon the Cold War mindset. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, a very yeah. polite way of saying yeah, it. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> indeed. Listen, what, what, one of our latest guests for, for the BRICS Summit, Mahmoud Abbas, he's just touched down, the Palestinian yeah. leader yes. here. Palestine in the picture. Why do you think Mahmoud Abbas is here? This is a very good question because why the rest of Palestine is not here? You see? Mm. Uh, I think we should remember our audience what happened in Beijing a few weeks ago, not too long ago. It was the Beijing Declaration. So under Wang Yi, Minister of Foreign Affairs, they brought 14 different factions in Palestine, in Gaza. They all sat together. They signed a document with uh, the Chinese overseeing everything. This means the Chinese have a direct responsibility about it. To uh, about unity of Palestine and unity in Gaza, unity of Palestine. Mm. You know what happened a few days after that? Israel killed Ismail Haniyeh, mm. which was part of this meeting with Wangi. You have no idea, all of you watching us, how this was viewed in Beijing. Mm. They saw it as a slap on the face, diplomatic, a loss of face, and an affront. Mm. Because the Chinese were supervising this project, which essentially unity of Palestine. And what the Chinese always say uh, at the level of foreign ministry, and even Xi Jinping himself, we are in favor yeah. of a sovereign Palestine state, yeah. and the UN has to conduct the process. Yeah. And of, and of yeah. The Israelis simply shot this. Mm. Well, Israel's, Literally. Been, Israel's been attacking yeah. UN peacekeepers in Lebanon. UN yeah. peacekeepers attacking in Lebanon. soldiers of the global governing body being it, attacked by Israel. And, and, and where is the West condemnation? Where nothing, is it? It's, it's silence. Yeah, but what's and if you allow me to be a little 
undiplomatic. Do it, <laughs> do it, Pepe. Uh, I, I have to do it because I'm not a diplomat. <laughs> Saudi Arabia and the Emirates, they don't say a word mm. about what's happening in Palestine. And this is, from I the point of view of BRICS as a whole, yeah, yeah it's tough, isn't it? This that? is an extremely touchy problem. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it would be nice, not only in these bilaterals, but on the table, on the yeah. common yeah. table, if C, Pezeshkian and Mr. Putin would address the problem to the Arabs. Well yeah. said. Look, well said. like we need some sort of resolution, all of mm, us, mm. condemning a genocide mm. and supporting Palestine sovereignty. Yeah, well said, Pepe. This well is going to be very tricky. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We are not sure, any of, all of us, we are not sure that this would happen. It would be great in terms of uh, the political capital of Bricks all over the global south is already enormous. Can you imagine if they have a resolution like this? Yeah, you know, I, I can't imagine. You know, Pepe, honestly, yeah. there's so much happening today with so many countries around the world getting under the same roof, trying to work out what is going to be this intense family relationship. It's yes. amazing to be here. It's so good to have you here, Pepe. My enormous I, pleasure. Massive fan. <laughs> I, I consider you to be a legend of the multipolar world. I'm so appreciative of your work. You've done great work, an amazing journalist, Pepe Escobar. Thank All you. All of us are trying, huh? Yeah, well, we're trying as hard as we can. <laughs> mm. uh, but it's uh, it's underway today, and uh, this was Lord Bebo, and we're gonna. I'll show you this video. So Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, arrives in Kazan for the BRICS summit, too. And then there's, let's, let's watch that video. So that was him arriving. Uh, let's let's keep going. Now this uh, this was peacemaker. I didn't hear anything about this. That's why I read these to you because I'm like, well, you know, I there's, it hasn't been community noted or anything, so I assume this is true. It says Russian missiles hit 22 ships in the Black Sea. The Ukrainian shadow fleet no longer exists. The ships went down with not only their cargo but also. GUR personnel and NATO troops. So if they sunk 22 ships, <laughs> I imagine some NATO troops died that day. Uh, this, hey, this is a, this is a good one. I'm going to play you this video because I thought it was cute. So Kim Jong Un's sister compares Ukraine to a dog. <laughs> if you look at the behavior of Seoul and Kiev, who fuss, beg, and dare to talk ridiculous nonsense about countries that have nuclear weapons. They are the same as two peas in a pod. We should call these com common features that are inherent in ill-mannered dogs nurtured by the United States. <laughs> and remember, I was telling you that Sean Hannity's got his nose up Netanyahu's butt. I mean, so yeah, so I'm going to play you this video. I thought that was a cute statement by uh, by the North Koreans. This is, uh, I, yeah, so by the way, that video of Joe Biden, this was, it was by Glenn Deason. And, uh, so, you know what, I'm going to put it right here in the video because I want to read this to you. Joe Biden in 1997 arrogantly rejected Russia's warnings about NATO expansion. A bad deal from NATO was the only deal for a weak Russia. Biden mocked Russia's warning it would have to align with China, and Biden joked Russia could also partner with Iran as the crowd laughed. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Uh, this was a huge long post, and I'm just going to put it on my X feed. I'm going to start it for you so you can kind of get a feel for it. But it's from Sergei uh, Sergey Lavrov, and boy, he goes into the whole history of uh, of, of U.S. or Western and uh, Russian conflict. And uh, like I said, this is this is hugely long. But I'm just going to say Hitler, like Napoleon, rallied most of Europe against our country, Russia. Whole battalions, divisions, and regiments from European countries fought on the fronts during World War II and the Great Patriotic War. 
Not all of them had to be forced. Based on the documents declassified by Russian's archival services, it's obvious that our allies were still deciding which side to take during World War II when World War II broke out. But the USSR was not yet drawn into the conflict. In 1940, France and Britain were ready to arm Finland to try to attack Leningrad. According to the same declassified documents in 1945, the Anglo-Saxons were plotting Operation Unthinkable, which could involve massive bomb strikes, including nuclear strikes on the Soviet Union and the dismemberment of the USSR. I don't want to belittle the role played by the Allies in World War II in achieving a common victory, but the duality of their policies is proved by numerous historical facts. This cannot be ignored. We'll get one more paragraph and then I'll move on. One gets the impression that just as Hitler put most of Europe, including the French, Spaniards, and Norsemen under Nazi banners, the United States is now rallying Europe to make it the, take the brunt of the war with Russia. And then it goes on from there a long ways. It definitely encourage you to read it. So uh, this is what the media hides. This is an interesting Iranian president to the American people. We didn't build military bases on your border. We didn't sanction your country into isolation and economic devastation. We didn't starve your people of medicine. We didn't assimilate your military leaders. You did this to us. See the dog, he's gonna go crazy if a bicycle goes by. <laughs> I just gotta, I gotta watch him. All right, so uh, this is uh, Dmitry um, Poly Poly Polinsky. All right, so this is a shame. And he's talking about the Modal Modalvian uh, election. Looks like they're going to join the European Union, but they're saying that this was a rigged election and that there's no way that the people of Moldova want to join the European Union. But, you know, once again, the CIA and uh, the Six Eyes are over there uh, plotting and getting them in. So this is a shame and a disgrace. Moldovan voters, voters in Moscow who were deprived of the right to vote shout, we want the vote in front of the clearly embarrassed embassy staff. This is how lame Western democracy looks like. You take a country, consistently intimidate it with the Russian bug, bugbear, ban free media, harass opposition, drastically artificially limit possibilities for the vote of the Moldovians in Russia, and expand, expand them to the utmost for Moldovians residing in the West, and then get a miserable less than 1% to praise the democratic vote. I wonder whether our Western colleagues realize how pathetic and unconvincing it looks. And that's true. Most of the votes that went for them to join the European Union came from outside of Moldova. They're saying that overwhelmingly inside the, the country that they voted against it. So, but he's, so he's, he's clearly right on. In fact, the referendum has clearly demonstrated one thing. Moldovians don't want to be dragged into the EU, period. And here's a minute long video. Let's, let's watch that now. Скажите, пожалуйста, всего два участка нормально было открыть по всей России? Почему мы так гордо есть? Скажите, почему в Европе отдали сколько бы участков, а здесь вот так сделали? Почему? Ну, папа не здесь. Время 11. Ребят, давайте. Брем, все, вот и. 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 Okay, so that was it. Uh, let's see, and then this, this is uh, Che Bowles. He's talking about the same thing. In, in Moscow, thousands of Moldovians resident in Russia came out to vote at the Moldovian embassy. Uh, the Moldovian state only made uh, 10,000 ballots available to the Russian-speaking Moldovian population here. Even though there's over 500,000 eligible, blatant manipulation by Sandu. And that's the, I think that's the woman that's getting elected uh, illegally. Okay, so that's uh, the Moldovian election. I know you don't care about the Moldovian election, but still, 
you know, it, it just shows you how the West cheats, 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 how the Democrats cheat, cheat, cheat. We can't do anything honest in the West, it just seems like to me, you know. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, this was Richard, and I, I like this post because I, I, I kind of feel the same way, you know. And he says, all the time we hear how evil Vladimir Putin is, but then every time I see him talk, he's more learned, sensible, straightforward, and honest than any U.S. politician. And he's got a video here. Let's watch that video now. Понимаете, я уже общался и с одним президентом США, и с другим, и с третьим. Президенты приходят и уходят, а политика не меняется. Знаете почему? Потому что очень сильна власть бюрократии. Вот человека избрали, он приходит с одними идеями, к нему приходят люди с кейсами, хорошо одетые и в темных, как у меня, костюмах, но только не с красным галстуком, а с черным или, или с темно-синим. И начинают объяснять, как нужно делать. И все сразу меняется, понимаете? Это, и это происходит от одной администрации к другой. Вот что-то изменить, это достаточно сложное дело. Это, я говорю без всякой иронии, это не потому, что кому-то не хочется, а потому что это сложно. Вот Обама, он же продвинутый человек, очень человек либеральных взглядов, правда, демократ. Он же перед выборами своими обещал закрыть Гуантанамо. Сделал? Нет. А почему? Он что не хотел? Очень хотел. Я уверен, что хотел. Но не получилось. Он искренне mm -hmm. к этому стремился. Не получается. Не так все просто. Но это не самый главный вопрос, хотя это, хотя это важно. Это трудно себе представить. Да? Люди в кандалах ходят там уже десятилетиями, без суда и следствия. Ну, представьте себе, Франция бы так сделала, или Россия. С потрохами бы сожрали уже давно. Нет, в Соединенных Штатах это возможно, и до сих пор продолжается. Вот, кстати, к вопросу о демократии. Но, но я сейчас не для этого привел, пример этот привел. Я привел, привел, потому что не все так просто. Но все-таки у меня есть определенная доля сдержанного оптимизма. Мне кажется, что мы по ключевым вопросам можем и должны договориться. So Окей. Now, if you didn't know, uh, the gray zone, they had a reporter that was arrested over in uh, Israel. Of course, the uh, Blinken and the State Department, they didn't do anything to, to get him out, just like Gonzalez. They let him die in that Ukraine prison. So, the, you know, the, the Democrats don't care if you're a reporter and you get arrested somewhere. They, they, unless you, you're a darling of the Democrats, you know, or, or working for the Democrats. But if you, if you, if you say anything against them, they, they'll let you rot in prison and die. But anyway, so the good news is uh, American journalist uh, Jeremy is on his way home after being uh, informally deported uh, by the Israeli police. Following an arbitrary arrest by the Israeli military at the West Bank checkpoint, Jeremy was blindfolded, shackled in a military truck, then held in solitary confinement for three days with little food or water. Israeli authorities had falsely accused him of supporting an enemy during wartime, for legitimate reporting uh, he performed for the gray zone. Though two Israeli judges ruled Jeremy's reporting did not violate the military censor's policy, they gave the police until October 20th to, to investigate him. During that period, the police seized and hacked his phone, confiscated his wallet and passport, and interrogated him repeatedly at the station in occupied territory. So anyway, the good news is he's out now. There's a picture, I'll put it up above. I think this was him uh, reporting. Oh, this is hilarious. <laughs> this is Richard Gren Grinnell. Now, if you, uh, hopefully you'll get this joke, okay? Hopefully you'll get this joke. 51 former intelligence officials say that Kamala worked at McDonald's. <laughs> Remember the 51 said that the 100 life laptop for people that, you know, any liberals watching this channel who don't remember that the 100 laptop was real, you know, or don't know it was real. Uh, anyway, I thought that was a cute uh, so this was uh, this was Adam, and uh, this post was humanity has failed, but it is kind of a heartwarming, uh, at the same time disturbing video. But I don't think there's no blood or anything. But it's a girl carrying her sister on her back, and I, I just wanted you to watch this video. It's it's it, it really tears at your at your at your heart if you ha if you have one. Democrats don't have a heart, you know. They 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 want to give the Israeli two thousand pound bombs, and they would just as soon see these kids die and to, to actually. Uh, Watch that video. How are you? Why are you doing this? 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 Why are you doing
طيب وين امك اياها؟ لسه راح اعاني شكلها وانت مش تعبانه وانت حاملاها هيك؟ تعبانه ولا لا؟ تعبانه وين تعبانه؟ اه مش فاكر وين رايحه انت هالبيت؟ انا رايحه عند في المنتزه البريج؟ اه طيب تعال اخذك معايا يلا اطلع بدي اخذها معايا بتحب اختك عشان احملك كانت طلع علي يلا مع السلامه سو <تصفيق> Let's keep going. Um, yeah, and this was what I was talking about. I, I'll, we'll, we'll read this. I, I, okay, so Florida is the third most populous state and has almost all their ballots counted on election night. And Arizona's corrupt Stephen Richer says Arizona will need two weeks to count their ballots. This is disgusting, and there's only one reason they take this long to rig it. Okay, so okay. What, ha what happens here? So we are in the ballot tabulation centers, and so you'll see that security is of great importance to us. At the Maricopa County Tabulation and Election Center, Richard walks me through the safeguards in place, stopping people from casting multiple ballots and someone else's ballot. I get this green return envelope assigned to me, and this is an image of the green return envelope. Right, so this would just have Margaret Hoover here, and this would have your address, and it would have this barcode that links to your voter profile. I see. Now, what's important about that barcode is it's what allows you to track your ballot. Importantly, it's also what allows us to prevent you from voting twice. So if you set that back, then we scan it in, and it loads a vote to your profile. So that if you show up to vote in person, we would say, oh, you already have a vote on your profile. So I I sign here. So you sign here. And, and then you verify my signature. And then we send it to humans, and those humans have your three most recent signatures that we've received back. They're all different political parties, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, Libertarians, and otherwise. Though Arizona has early in-person voting and pre-processes absentee ballots, it still struggles with slow vote counting. Why? because the state allows voters to drop off mail-in ballots at polling places as late as 7 p.m. on election day. And because we have exceptionally close margins, Arizona calls its races later than other states do. And it takes I you 13 days on average to finish the count. Seems to me to be a really ripe place for bipartisan reform. Narrow Republican majorities in each house of the legislature, a Democratic governor, and yet, the legislature got together, had a bipartisan bill this year that didn't touch it. Yes, gives you an indication of how poisonous the partisan atmosphere is today. And uh, anyway, so, all righty, there's, uh, let's keep going here. Uh, this was uh, Elon Musk. Um, so he's, he's talking, he says, I hate politics. I don't want to be in politics. I'm a technologist. I build rockets. In cars, I just derive joy from seeing people enjoy the products that my companies make. But the stakes are so high that I had no choice but to take a stand. And he put up a video here. Let's, let's watch that right now. You know, I build rockets and cars and stuff. Um, so what, what, what am I doing in politics? Um, it, it's, it's not, I, I don't want to be in politics. I want to be clear. <laughs> that is not my preference. I, 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 like, I just like building stuff. I, I like building products that people love. Um, and, and, and I... You know, I, I, I derive joy from seeing people enjoy the products that my companies make. Um, so, I, I like making products people love. And that, that, that's what I normally like doing. And I, and I, and I, I actually don't like politics at all. <laughs> I hate politics. <laughs> but, 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 but the stakes are so high here that I, I have had no choice but to uh, take a stand. Um, so it, it's not something I want to do and... Um. Okay, so we got that. Uh, this was really cool. And I'm gonna finish the video off right here. But they put up this video and it, it's, 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 it's like uh, if you ever watched uh, Babylon 5 uh, or even some of the uh, you know, the really uh, Star Trek movies, 
it's a clip and they and they put this together and uh boy it's really it's bad badass badass peace out stay free